friends tech videos tech here with a new video today we are going to make a composition tutorial in davinci resolve uh, i will divide this tutorial in more parts probably having another part or two in this part i will just show you how to make the fire and smoke effects that you saw in the intro using particles and then in the next video we can continue building the other part of the scene like like showing you how to work with camera projection and stuff like that so without further ado let's start i'm in a new DaVinci Resolve project first of all as usual as always i create a new fusion composition right click new fusion composition let me write here composition and i will make a duration of 25 seconds Drag the composition to the timeline. Now we are ready to move to the Fusion tab. As always, I do arrangements. I have already set it to, to snap to the grid. We will start with the first fire effect, which is the effect on the right of the scene, on the right of the house. As always with the particles, we start with the particle emitter. Control space, P emitter. And after the emitter, we all always need to have a particle renderer. So I will just go ahead and add control space p render. Now we can we can move forward. Let me edit the settings of this particle. So we can start with a particle emitter. We will have a number of 1.0 so that would be the number of particles generated the number of variants will set it to 0.1 always the variance is gives a randomness to any particle property then the large span will be 100 but very important is to change the lifespan variance because it will allow us to have a more realistic effect of the fire because the lifespan is how long the uh, one particle lives in the scene so we don't want them to live on equal times but lifetime in the scene sh would be good if it's random some of them die first and some later so that is why the lifespan variance is very important i will put a lifespan of 50. let me see what we have already here zoom in now we have the particles here but if we want the particles to start moving then we have to change the velocity settings. We'll start with velocity of 0.2, but to see this in action, let me just add a more 3D node because we will have your work in a 3D scene. Then I will add a render 3D node and connect this to media out. Now to, to to be able to see this, to be able to, to see the particles, I will go to the to the style tab and just change it to blob. And you see now we have particles moving. Let me come back and work with the properties in this section in the controls tab. Now if I want to change the angle of movement of the of the particles, I will change it here. I will put 90 for the angle because I want the particles to move up and also the angle doesn't have to be linear we want it to the particles to move upwards but in different positions i mean the angle will will variate i'll put 40 here as you can see they are spread they start the particles started to spread out this looks much better and we can change the angle z or z I will put it 44. So this this is the angle in the set set space because we are working in 3D space. We want them, we want the particles to move to have different positions in the set space as well. And also, of course, I will change the angle Z variance. I'll put the value of 21 here. We don't have to do. No. We will leave the rotation and the spin the same. We can move to the style tab again now because we want uh, to have some particles that simulate the, the smoke and the fire 
we cannot use the blob but we want to use a fast noise note so to be able to do that we will first change the style to bitmap and as you can see you have a you get a yellow triangle here which means that we can connect a picture or anything else we will use a fast noise here so control space search for fast noise let me see this the fast noise on the left screen now we will need to edit the settings for the fast noise we just we will just change the seeth rate here the seeth rate when we make it bigger than zero it means that the fast noise will start to animate just check it now see now it's it's moving but we also need to go to the settings I mean, the, we also need to go to the image section because the, the fast noise is very big. We want it to be very small because each because it will be linked to the particles and each particle has a fast noise connected to it. So this is very big. We want to make it as smaller as possible. I will go with 60. As you can see, it doesn't allow me to, to do that, but I need to uncheck the auto resolution option then i will go with 60 and 60 will make it a small square and then i will need to go to the color tab we need to change this to gradient and i'll change the gradient type to radial and make bring this here in the middle i will show you shortly what I'm trying to do. Each noise will will represent a smoke particle or a fire particle, but we need to change the color from of the gradient. So move the black, the black to be the background and the white to be the foreground. And for the black we will lower the alpha and we'll get this kind of particle which looks like a smoke. And now if I connect it to the P emitter and see it on the right screen you can see that now it looks more like an like a smoke let me go back to the emitter again we'll edit some other settings for the animate i will change it to particle age and now we need to do other settings as well i will change the gain to 0.677 we will go to the size control, we'll change the size of one particle to be bigger. And as you saw, immediately this effect, now we are approaching the getting a smoke effect, more realistic sort of smoke effect, so if I change the size, look at this screen over here, oh, changing the size gives us particle density. If I change it to 0 0.5, I think it's enough. We also want the size to, to vary it we don't want to have same size for each of the particles we want them to be random so again remember variance is very handy because it gives randomness and randomness helps achieve more realistic effects i'll put here 0 0.1102 and i will change size to velocity to minus 0 0.062 now we need to change the size over life so they will start with a smaller size and then it will go bigger as they move on. Now if I play this, you see that we, we are getting a good effect. And the fade control, the fade control means that the, so when the particles are, are born they won't just pop up but they will fade in and fade out. So let me play this and you can see what I mean by that. As you can see now they are popping in, but when I change the fading in, we don't see them fading in anymore. Maybe put this to 0 0.061 or let's get a bigger number there, 0 0.07. We also would like to change the fading out, so when they are when the particles die, they will, will just not pop out immediately, but we will give it a fade out effect. So like they fade out in the in the space. I will give this a value of 0 0.772. And now the most important thing, but let me first move this a little bit down. So that you can see it better on the right screen. 
Now the most important thing, the next thing we want to achieve is to get a fire effect. Right now we can see that we have a smoke, but for this particular example we want fire. So we will open the color controls and go to the to the color of our life controls and change that too. Now this is very important. As you can see everything is connected to the life of the particle. So we want to change the color of the particle as they move up. So we will start with the with the orange value. Let me make this the black one first. As you can see, as the particle go to the end of their life, they start to turn black. Now we get a black smoke. Next we will need to add uh, maybe this is a good value and also here would be good if we get the same, actually I will get the same value as here, but I will just change the opacity for the alpha channel and watch what what happens, the fire color get, gets more brighter. Can I either change the color to to be more be more orange or to, to simulate uh, fire, but you can achieve by lowering the alpha effect. Maybe this is even better because it will blend with the scene, but it's up to you. I'd like to keep it like this. And now the fire is ready. We just need to add a directional force. The directional force is it will cause the particles to move slightly to one direction. In this particular case, we, we will try to simulate the wind, a slight wind, which moves the the smoke to the right. So after the P emitter node, I draw space bar P, search for P, directional force. And the values for this directional force will be the strength minus 0 0.031, minus 199.5, and yeah, let me play this. As you can see, now the fire as it moves up, it starts to move, move on the it starts to move on the right side. I think this give more realism to this fire effect, but it's up to you if you want to use it or not. Now we are done with this fire. We want to create another one. You can just copy this emitter and then connect this to emitter one. We will use the same fast noise, we didn't have to create another one. And for the settings I will just go quickly and they should be the same. And this one will also have a be directional force, we will use the same directional force, but we need to copy it and paste it. And we'll connect it to here, because we cannot connect this emitter to this one, we just need to create a new one. Oh, the same goes for the renderer. Render 3D. Actually, I need a P render. P render, particle render node. That will connect this to here. Let me move this aside, one of them, and now we get two. Now we have two fires set in place. And the last thing for this part of the tutorial will be to create the smoke effect. We will again create a new p emitter node. Connect this to the. So let me copy this and paste it. Connect this here. You need a particle render for this type as well. Let me move it here. I will connect it to the merge. But now we need to play with the settings. And the settings for this particle emitter will be as follows. We'll use a camera, go to the Mars 3D node, 
control space camera 3D. Let's move this up and move the camera backwards a little bit. Now we have the emitter here. We would like that to go closer to the camera, but move it down. So if we play the animation, then the smoke will start popping out in front of the camera as long as soon as it reaches out. As you can see now the smoke is is appearing. Let me change the colors a little bit more. Maybe like so. One last thing, if you don't want to wait for the particles to be born, but you want them to start already, you can go to the P render, to the each of the particle renders and increase the pre-generated frames. So if you go higher and as you can see in the starting of the animation, they just, we already have the fire set on, so you won't have to wait for that. Maybe those, this will be useful for the smoke if we pre-generate it as soon as the animation starts to play. We already have the smoke showing up in the cameras. And also, I will save this all as a settings file. Settings, save, save as. We'll save it as a fire particles. So if you, if you feel lazy to recreate this or if you don't get the same result, you can just download it from my webpage which is techvideostech.com. I will provide you with a link in the description below. And that's pretty much it for this first part of this tutorial. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification icon so that you get notified when I release the second part of this tutorial. As always, if you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, I have a full playlist of tutorials which cover lots of DaVinci Resolve aspects and video the editing aspects or motion graphics. You can access it by clicking the card, leave your comments questions and critics on the comments section below and I think we are pretty much done with this part of this tutorial hope you liked it and this was easy to follow and with you guys see you next time see you in the next part of this tutorial thanks for watching and bye